Linus has some some wisdom he would like to share with you, okay? It started off with this beautiful thing. You copied that function without any understanding why it does what it does. As a result, your code is garbage. Again, Linus. Isn't that just lovely? But let's actually look at the real thing, okay? So this is actually from an excerpt. So this was, uh, this was just a few days ago. Remember how everybody's like, Linus, he's changed. He went to anger management. It's so great. Anyways, Steven. Stop making things more complicated than they need to be. This is actually something that, at this point, I have a meeting three days a week, it feels like, where one of the phrases is, why are things so complicated? Making things more complicated than they need to be is, is, is like an apparent pastime of web development now. I have this bone to kind of pick in general. Like, here's like something that I really hate. You develop a service that helps manage and launch your Docker containers, right? Let's just say you have that. doesn't matter what the thing's called. And then what do you do? Then you build something that wraps your Dockers. So that way, you don't even want people having to think really it's about Docker. We're just going to, we have this nice little tool that helps you do everything. Well, what happens when you do that? Now you have a tool that has virtually no documentation and is only known internally that effectively just is a one-to-one -one mapping with Docker that now, instead of having people just learn the thing itself, they have to learn the tool that does the thing. Like, I hate that approach. I'm just, I'm just kind of making up an, a, you know, a thing, right? But you see this all the time where people wrap an already well-known tool with their own tool because it, it helps shortcut some basic common use cases. And that causes such problems. Just make people learn the tool, right? I mean, there's some added value, right? The, the, the happy case is super quick, right? The happy case, that's why they do it, is right? Is because everyone keeps, keeps building the same thing over and over again. And I'm going to I'm going to make a real I'm going to make a real strong statement here. It is okay to rebuild the same thing over and over and over again. It's okay. Story of my life. My team made a wrapper over Docker Compose. They call it Docker Composer. Yeah, and it probably is shitty. Honestly, cuz now you have to learn Docker Composer and its available options as opposed to something that's more documented called Docker Compose, which is already a wrapper around a well-known thing called Docker. Now you got to learn three things, and one of them depends on Carl putting the gosh dang documentation up and not to do, read me, do, fuck, Carl! Dude, I hate it. Anyways, and damn it, stop copying VSF layer functions. It was a bad idea last time. It's a horribly bad idea this time, too. I'm not taking this kind of crap. The whole get next Eno uh, should be Atomic 64 ad return. End of story. You aren't special. If the, VS, if the VFS functions don't work for you, you don't use them. But damn it, you also don't then steal them without understanding what they do and why they were necessary. The reason get next Eno is critical is because it's used by things like pipes and sockets, etc. that get created at high rates. The, the, the inode numbers most definitely do not get cached. You copied that function without understanding why it does what it does. And as a result, your code is garbage again. Now, the thing is, is you don't have to know what VFS is. You don't have to know what get in next Eno is. Um, you, sh you, I mean, you should know what an Atomic 64 is. But uh, let's just say you know what none of these things are, okay? Sounds like a personal grudge. It doesn't sound like a personal grudge. It sounds like somebody that is maintaining open source in which people are constantly adding things. And when you're adding things to the Linux kernel, you have to be judicious AF, Right? Like, as judicious as possible. You cannot let, like, everything has to be completely and utterly, like, required to be so dang good. And this conversation has been had once before. This right here. Now, here's the hard part I have with this statement, and here's the good part. So let's try to take something away from this that I think is really uh, valuable, which is how often... This reminds me of a boot.dev article. Boot.dev, by the way, boot.dev slash prime as hashtag ad. Boot.dev slash prime as hashtag ad. Um, <clears throat> where it's about not trying to fix the direct problem, but trying to understand why the problem exists and how to fix what's causing the problem. This is effectively a derivative of the XY problem, right? You have problem X, 
and you're trying to go about solving problem X by going down route Y. Y invokes some sort of problem, so you go and try to get Y fixed. And when Y is too hard to fix or people are confused why you're trying to do Y, it's because what you're really trying to do is X. You just told them about Y. Does that make sense? And so then it's very, very confusing. It's called the XY problem. Yeah, I have a video where I read an article about it. It's really, really good. It's actually, it's, it's one of my favorite ways I try to think about it. Honestly, the XY problem, every person should take time and read the XY problem or go watch my video on it. Uh, all right, here we go. I'll just read a, a little bit of this. The XY problem or XY problem often comes up in software development or customer support where a per someone asks to help uh, to achieve solution X, that they have chosen a way to solve a different problem Y. Helping their solution may not help them solve the actual problem if it's not a good approach in the first place. So in other words, you're constantly confusing everybody around what you're trying to do because you're so focused on Y that you're not actually solving the real problem. Anyways, let's keep on going. Honestly, kill this thing with fire. It was a bad idea. I put my foot down, and you are not doing unique uh, regular file inode numbers until somebody points out uh, points to a real problem. Fair. This is good. This is good. This is okay. I like where this is going. I like where this is going, actually, because uh, this whole I make up problems and then I write overly complicated crap code to solve them has to stop. No more. It stops here. Dude, this is a lesson in which I feel like all of web dev right now desperately needs to hear. You don't have to solve every problem by creating a new abstraction. Right? Not every problem is worth solving. It's okay to sometimes repeat yourself. I feel like dry and uh, JavaScript's unique ability to abstract has made people gone crazy. I think there's, I think, let's see, I, see, this is what I think that has happened here. Let's get a new, let's get a new picture here. This is what I think that, it, that where things have gone wrong. All right, there's, there's three parts to the problem that we're seeing with like modern web development. One is lack of experience. And this is because, I mean, this is because the web is the easiest to, uh, easiest to en enter, right? It just is. It's just extremely easy to enter. Two, dry. Don't repeat yourself. This mantra has plagued development so dang much, right? It, it, everyone is constantly trying never to repeat themselves ever. And it's causing people to write wrappers around everything because anytime something is repeated between teams, it's like, we got to solve this. There's a tool that exists here. We could solve this by making a better tool. And then it just explodes. And then number three, JavaScript. Now you're probably thinking, okay, this is another anti-JavaScript rant. It's not an anti-JavaScript rant. I actually really think JavaScript is an incredible language. JavaScript allows you to abstract ad infinitum. And that is the danger of JavaScript is that what it's meant for versus what it is used for are two different things. And when you combine all of this together, this third one actually becomes a danger because of how easy it is to abstract in JavaScript. It is an amazing language. The fact that you can abstract anything at any point in any kind of way you foresee is incredible. It's honestly, it's, it's incredible. But I think with these three, these three things together have just done so much damage to web development because people can just constantly, they can see a problem and they can just drive the problem into some version of abstraction. And when someone doesn't like one aspect of that, they can drive a new solution. And when someone doesn't like that one aspect, they can drive another solution. And when someone doesn't like that aspect, they can drive another solution. Yeah, there's a competing standards thing. It's... It, it, Dry, just boilerplate TF, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, how will this affect the sprint burndown? Good point, those are good points. Uh, but this is, honestly, this is a great, I love that. I actually, I, I absolutely love this. Uh, I think that this is something that um, everybody here should take like deep, even me, I, I need to hear this regularly, which is find a real problem before you solve something. Stop finding problems that could exist. Stop designing a system that will work for everybody at all times.
I don't want to see a single event FS patch that doesn't have a real bug report associated with it. And the next time I see you copying VFS functions or any other core functions without understanding what the fuck they do and why they do it, I'm going to put you in my spam filter for a week. I'm done. I'm really, really tired of having to look at event FS garbage. Love, Linus. Based Linus take. Honestly, this is a great Linus take. This is so good. This is so good because the reason why I love this is that it it's just it goes back to this problem that I feel like has just been indicative of, of development for the last about 10 years, which is stop solving problems that don't exist. Like, I think we should all wake up a little bit, have a nice little a framed picture of Linus, and look at it and go, I will stop doing this. And just start solving things instead of solving problems that don't exist. A little smell the kernel and wake the frick up. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Uh, wait, there's a response to it? Oh, one of Steven's answers got me rolling on the floor laughing. What did poor Steven do? It's poor Steven. And now some of this was needed due to the way the dirt was wrapped. Let's see, hold on. Oh, this is just like, uh, yeah, I, we'd have to like understand more, more um, what's it called? We'd have to like read through this to understand this. Every time I click this and the tree changes, it, it, it's, it's hard for me to understand where I just was. I'm not, we're not, I, I, hey, you know what? I ain't going to read all that. I'm sorry or congratulations. Bro woke up and it's 1999. Yeah, you know, they still, I mean, again, they still use that type of method for communication. And yet somehow it's the most successful project ever ran ever. Just because something isn't new and shiny doesn't mean it's not like the most successful thing ever, you know? Like real talk. It's there to keep the noobs out. Uh, it's there to keep the shiny the sh shiny object syndrome people out. Like, oh, I can't be using this to look at I couldn't look at this and then what happens? They all leave. Fixing shit that isn't broken is West Coast Tech Venture Capital. <laughs> the name is Fixing Shit That Ain't Broken a Gen. <laughs> 